Hello everyone, welcome to the Take Care Man channel. In this video, my third straight razor shave. Stick around to see if the goatee survived to the end of the shave, and I ponder why there's so many Chris's, Dave's, and Ken's in wet shaving. <laughs> Start off with a gear rundown, Wild West Brushworks handle with a Maggard's Knot, PAA tube pre-shave, Vespers from Barrister and Mann, and the Ralph Aust 5.8 straight razor that I purchased from Maggard's and had used twice before, but freshly honed by my friend Ken, aka Fluffy. Appreciate that, Ken. Check out his channel below. And so I decided to record this shave without talking. <laughs> So that's why I'm overdubbing later. I just want to be able to focus on the shave. This is my third straight razor shave. I didn't record the second one. I think I may have tried to. I can't remember. I didn't cut myself on that shave, uh, so I was pretty pretty proud of that. Uh, but it was still pretty slow going, so I decided to just focus on trying to get my technique down. Uh, well, you know, as down as possible for your third straight razor shave. But I definitely noticed a difference. You know, this came from uh, Maggard's supposedly shave ready, and it, and it was. I mean, I was able to do that first shave, as you saw, um, and I was, uh, you know, a little concerned. It was a little tuggy, and definitely when it came back from Ken, it was sharp, and I didn't feel the tug that I got uh, the way it came from, from Maggard. So I appreciate Ken uh, honing that up for me. I really appreciate it. And... You know, uh, it's this is not a knock on or maggards at all. I think that 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 razor was shave ready. I mean, I was able to shave with it, uh, no problem. But it was just uh, just a bit tuggy, uh, which is a phrase getting way overused <laughs> in our community currently. But uh, yeah, definitely much of an improvement. So one of the tips someone gave me, several people actually, that uh, to use the opposite hand when doing upstrokes on the uh, opposite side of the face. In other words, right hand on the left side on the on the upstrokes. One of the biggest challenges for me from transitioning from DE to straight razor is that I'm used to just going straight down, across, straight up as my width across and against the green. With straight razors, I think you need to pay a little bit more attention to hair mapping, like the hair growth pattern uh, on your face. And I'm still sort of working on getting my sequence, you know, figured out about how I'm going to do that, which direction. I tried to start on the left side with my right hand because it just feels more comfortable. But I decided to switch to my left just to, you know, try to get more and more used to that. So, um, it, it, you know, it's definitely awkward if you're not used to using your left hand. Again, this, this razor was definitely sharper and did a better job cutting after Ken put his hone on it. He also honed up a gold dollar for me and sent a third razor, which I'll try to use in a shave pretty soon. Uh, Ken was very generous, both with his time and his skill and knowledge and his stones and uh, also in sharing a razor and a uh, tub of soap, the uh, Oriental scent from West Coast Shaving. For me, that's been one of the most surprising things about this hobby, just about how generous the community is. You just have so many people out there that are willing to help out and just uh, want you to see you enjoy the hobby that they enjoy. So I really appreciate people like Ken. It was hot in the bathroom for some reason. I don't know if it was me sweating the shave or if it was actually that hot. Now, when I started this shave, sort of a spoiler alert here, I had no intention of taking the goatee off, but by the time this video is over, the goatee will be gone. <laughs> it was not fully intentional to start with. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. But, uh, you know, it had been giving me trouble, uh, meaning the goatee not itching or anything like that. But because of my CPAP mask, I was uh, not getting a good seal, starting to have leaks. I have to wear a full face mask, uh, CPAP mask, and... It doesn't seal as well with the goatee, which is part of the reason I originally got rid of the goatee uh, back in the spring. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm sure that I'm doing several things wrong here, but, you know, right now I'm not focused on trying to remember every little thing, but instead just trying to get comfortable with the razor and different ways to hold it. 
Uh, I'm definitely watching other people's videos and, you know, sort of watching what their sequence is, how they tend to hold it. And, and something I've noticed is everybody is different on how they do their straight razor shaves, which is great, I think. You know, I don't think that there's a right or wrong way. I think you, what has to work for you um, and what can work for you consistently, right? And uh, just, it's like anything. Um, you know, my daughter was saying something the other day. She was trying to, I think she was trying to fold a, like a sheet or something. And she said, like, I'm horrible at this. And I was like, well, it's like anything. You get better with practice. Or at least that's true with most things. So I really just focused on trying, you know, to, to enjoy the shave at this point and, you know, work on my technique. By the way, for whatever reason, see, here's just one of those areas where I'm going back like I'm going up on the same area I've done before. Um, but again, I guess it's, you know, catching more hair than it did on the first time I went across that way. But now this is new, you know, this uh, on the upper part of the face, on the cheek and everything going going up. And by the way, these uh, against the grain upstrokes, I don't know if this is true for everybody, but these tend to be the most uh, comfortable for me. Uh, I'm showing there that there was a little spot of blood on the lather i'm not sure i kind of think i might have got a a bump caught a bump that was already there but it doesn't it doesn't bleed much i don't think in the shape but the, these these strokes to me are the most satisfying um they just seem to glide a much you know much easier and uh, cut cut a lot better and again you know in watching people uh I'm learning quite a bit about how they do it. I mean, Dave Card uh, left some great comments on one of my recent videos uh, to really help me start to get you know used to this way of shaving. By the way, here's something you'll only hear Dave Card say. So you're saying I'm just gonna use the whack because I'm running a bit late. I really enjoyed Ken's recent video and what he's learned from his uh, first uh, 69 shaves. Ken, as in shave three two six. But yeah, I, I um, felt pretty good about this shave as it was going along and, you know, didn't feel that nervous doing it. You know, you get more comfortable with each, you know, shave. Again, this is only my third with the straight, but, you know, I'm also rolling in some shavettes uh, in between. And I don't record all of my shaves sometimes uh, because I just decided to, you know, just shave and not record it other times i'm having you know equipment malfunctions or i'm running late and don't have time to record it or whatever the case may be now i've heard some people say they don't do a cross grain i've, I've with straight razor i've seen some youtubers do this and some don't um, this is the way i de shave and so it's i guess why i'm trying to do it um, one tip that i got from ken that i thought was really helpful it's when you get down to the, the chin line is actually pulling that chin line up, uh, meaning by stretching from up above to bring that chin line up higher. And you'll see here in a minute I do that. My, my hair grows up pretty high on my cheeks, so I have to get up pretty close there. This is the, what a part I was talking that, that I really learned from Ken is that like pulling up to get that chin line up a little bit instead of trying to shave it right on the chin line. I really felt like that that uh, helped. Now, at this point, I don't think I've cut the notch into my goatee. Um, I'm pretty sure it's on my left side, or be your right, as you look at the screen. But but I may have already done like a little notch below my mustache area. I can't remember what to see when it gets a better shot here. But um, but yeah, so far so good in this, this shave. Like I said, I had that one little spot of blood, but I think it was just from a pre-existing bump. My lather got kind of thin here. I've, I've really tried to start making sure that I hydrate uh, the soap well but I I have the habit of when I'm adding water I dip my brush into the sink which obviously you know washes off some soap as well and so I think I need to do a little bit more of that sprinkling technique or use, use a spray bottle or something but it's just what I've done so often uh, you know with de shaving and um, obviously you know de shaving you get away with your lather not being where you want it to be uh, and with a straight, you know, you definitely need a slick surface. So you'll see I reapply a lot in this shave because I just want to make sure that I've got, uh, you know, good moisture, good slickness uh, before uh, I do my pass or for, you know, while I continue with the pass. Yeah, I don't see where I've cut the notch yet. 
uh, in the goatee, but that's going to happen here in a little bit, which changes the course of the, the shave ultimately. Now, I've edited this down quite a bit. I didn't cut out any of the actual shaving part. I just cut in, you know, cut out the sort of the lathering up to start with. And then when I'm wiping off in between strokes, I've, I've edited that out. <laughs> you can see here I'm frustrated with like trying to figure out how to hold it, at which angle to go. I'm sure that was completely unconventional what I attempted there. So yeah, I'm just trying to feel like, okay, how should I hold this razor? How should I? And uh, I noticed uh, Eric over at uh, Adventures in Wet Shaving is a video that he put out recently on how to um, hold the razors that I, that I need to watch. But that particular thing worked for me. But part of the challenge for me with a straight is the handle tends to get into the way, get, or get in the way, excuse me, as I'm, you know, trying to shave. And so it, uh, you know, it's like bumping up against my chest or anyway, just trying to figure out how to, what to do with the handle sometimes uh, during, you know, each pass is a little bit of a challenge. So, for example, just, you know, setting that handle at a 45 degree angle uh, instead of like, a, you know, 90 degrees it obviously helps because it's not bumping right into my chin. Still don't think I've cut the notch into the goatee yet. Um, it's not as slick there as I wanted it to be, so I'm lathering back up. Yeah, see, I got a little too close there on the goatee. I don't think this is still the part that really affected it that much. I definitely took off more than I meant to there from the goatee side, but I don't really notice it at this point, I don't think. But it's still not the part. You can see there where it's kind of, yeah, I see where I've kind of cut a notch in under the mustache, so it's kind of gotten wopsided. And I think I may see it there. Yeah, I've kind of noticed, oh, you're... Starting to mess up the goatee, and of course, like I said, I was already thinking oh, I got to take this thing off at the end of November, but I ended up taking it off. Uh, <laughs> it's still inside the month of November instead of uh, in December, since I. And so through here, I think I'm trying to straighten it up, like I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to salvage it, but I think I just you know ended up making it worse, and I'm like, oh well, this is not. <laughs> This, this goatee is not long for this world. It's not just not going to make it. So, you know, like I said, uh, my, my lather is pretty thin here. I could have reloaded, uh, but I didn't. So I had to switch to the DE. I had it standing by uh, anyway, but I was trying to, because I was trying to salvage this goatee, <laughs> I pulled out the DE to try to shape it up. But that didn't really help that much. I mean, it was easier to do. Um, but I was just, you know, I looked at it and I was like, well, you know, I could separate the mustache from the goatee and just kind of, you know, because I had that huge notch, you can see there. So I'm trying to, this is, <laughs> this is called goatee triage. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to assess what to do with the thing. Um, like I said, I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I really uh, prefer the way I look with the goatee, but it's just not functional right now in terms of uh, trying to get my CPAP mask to, uh, to fit. Um, so here I'm just uh, trying to touch up some of those areas, sort of picking up those areas, and, and rather than doing it with the straight, doing it with the D. Uh, yeah, I don't know how people feel about this, and honestly, I don't really care how people feel about this. Like I'm doing it. I mean, I've seen some people do that, use a, you know, have a D as for like some of their uh, pickups or when they're using a shavette or a straight. I mean, obviously, eventually, I want to be able to use the straight all the way through. Like that's the goal, just as a as a goal for me personally for sort of trying to get mastery over the over the tool right learn how to do that way of shaving but you can see here we, what I'm doing is I'm checking my double chin and see if I have the coverage I would normally have with a goatee and I didn't like before sometimes my goatee would get too narrow and so here it's not covering <laughs> covering that little double chin dimple so I'm like you know what let's just take this thing the rest of the way off So I lathered up to just go ahead and take off the goatee. And when I, while I was lathering, I actually had full intention of taking it off with the DE razor. Or at least I think that's what I was thinking. Because I remember when I went to actually start shaving it, I was surprised to find myself holding uh, the straight razor to take it off. Which is what I ended up doing, is using the straight on the goatee. I think that it might have been... 
um, sort of a subconscious challenge. Uh, but I, I just decided to, to do it with the, the straight razor. You know, one of the things I've allowed myself doing while trying to learn how to do this is if I don't like start out well on a particular area, just switch to another area. Like just get some momentum going. I kind of scared myself there. I thought I almost cut myself when I like bumped my hand. By the way, uh, does anybody comment below? Anybody ever cut their stretch hand while, while they're shaving? I've noticed a few times that my razor gets a little close, close to the hand I'm using to stretch. So I need to kind of be more cognizant of that, I guess, as I'm shaving. By the way, I kind of heard Ken flexing in his video that he's one of the few YouTubers that actually shaves the goatee area, <laughs> saying that most of the straight razor shavers that are on YouTube have goatees and therefore are not shaving where he has to shave, kind of pounding his chest like he's, you know, all that. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time, Ken. By the way, has anybody ever noticed there's a whole lot of Chris's in wet shaving and Dave's in wet shaving? And Ken's in wet shaving? Does this bother anybody else? It concerns me. It's a little strange. We'll return after these messages. Who's a cool guy in town? We all think he's great. It's Shaving Fun Ken. He's the cutest guy around the shaving for a day. <laughs> Shave his beard off. He looks so nice. He smells so good. Because he wears old spice. What a hunt. He so good. Barbie kisses him twice. <laughs> Can Well, if you made it to this point in the video for that commercial break, you are dedicated just having a little fun with my guys. Appreciate all the guys in wet shaving, particularly the content creators out there and the commenters who uh, make this such a vibrant community. So while I did not start the shave intending to take off the goatee with a straight razor, that's uh, where we ended up. <laughs> it's just uh, destiny. I think there was part of me that was wanting to get rid of it anyway because of the CPAP mask. But, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to get into the goatee as much as I did originally. But uh, at that point, it was just too lopsided, and I tried to uh, take it off. I do have a couple of commenters who keep encouraging attempting the mustache. But I assure you my wife would find some way to drug me uh, and uh, remove it during my sleep. She says the mustache is a no-go. So that's 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 pretty much the final word on that. One of the things that learning how to wet shave reminds me of is learning how to golf. I remember when I was building my golf swing, there were so many thoughts to keep in mind, right? Like all these different things, keep your head down, your eye on the ball, swing in a bucket, like whatever. Like, you know, make sure you don't close the club face or, you know, shut it or open it or whatever, right? Just tons of different thoughts and swing points to keep in mind. And of course, you had to keep doing it until it became muscle memory. And that's part of the problem for me right now is there's so many thoughts and pieces of advice in my head, which I appreciate all of it, right? But sometimes it's um, it's a whole lot. So at some point in the shave for me, I just have to quiet all that advice and just try to do what's becoming a little bit instinctual, but at the same time trying to build uh, muscle memory and, and sort of a routine. So it helps to know all that stuff and sort of think of it ahead of time and maybe even review it during a shave. But at some point, you just have to push it out of your mind and just shave. And honestly, I think that's one of the reasons I enjoyed golf is it was something to sort of try to conquer and master. I never got that great at golf, but I sure enjoyed myself. And, you know, right now I can get better shaves with my DEs, but being able to do the straight razor shave gives me something to focus on uh, that requires concentration and, and a bit of meditation, if you will. And so, you know, I, I'm reserving these right now mostly for when I'm not working. In other words, not not on a day where I've got to go to work, but rather on the weekends or days when I'm not working so that I can uh, just enjoy it, take my time, not rush, and really get focused in on the shave. I find it very relaxing. Yes, it can be stressful learning how to do it, but still, ultimately, it's an it's an enjoyable challenge that uh, that I that I really am having a lot of fun with. 
My apologies for the water running sounds. I was filling the sink back up. I know I know these water sounds apparently bug some people, but whatever. It, but I was filling back up the sink because I was going to relather uh, and use the DE to just clean up to make sure I got everything around the goatee the way it needs to be. Because I'm still a little, uh, you know, tenuous, like just kind of taking my time around the mouth area with a straight razor. So <laughs> making sure I got cleaned up good around the mouth with the DE was uh, what I was going for here. And again, this may be overkill, but, you know, I was just uh, enjoying myself. I it, it, it had to take the goatee off early and just want to make sure it was uh, good and clean around those areas. And definitely wanted to use the D under the nose on the against the grain pass, a.k.a. the fool's pass, because I'm not as comfortable yet doing that with straight razor so definitely want to clean up that area against the grain with the uh, DE instead of the straight. Okay I rinsed off got into the post shave here with the little alum or alum how do you how do you who, what's the preferred saying comment below alum or alum it's like the British say aluminium and we say aluminum I'm not for sure which one is supposed to be alum or Alum or alum, 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 whatever. Anyway, felt a lot of sting there, as you might imagine. I love the coniferous aloe and witch hazel splash from Sterling. Their aloe and witch hazel splashes are amazing. Uh, I encourage you to try them. They've got nice sample sizes if you want to try out some of the different scents they have. And what I discovered to be my favorite aftershave splash based on how much is left in it <laughs> That's probably my lowest level on a splash I have is the coniferous aftershave splash from Sterling. And I have it in the glacial level of menthol. And I just love it. In fact, I'm going to be ordering a couple of backup bottles because it's it's just it's a nice pick me up. Sometimes I'll use it even after when not shaving just to kind of splash it on my face to wake me up a little bit. OK, using what I affectionately refer to as the Maggard shave fan, which is just a Maggard's <laughs> box <laughs> that I've converted into my shave fan. All right, then following up with a coniferous shave balm from Sterling. As you can tell, I really like the coniferous scent from Sterling. I wanted to pick up that evergreen scent, I think it was called, that they had for Black Friday, but it sold out pretty quickly. I wasn't able to pick it up. Yeah, but overall, good shave. I'm happy with the progress I'm making. I'm looking forward to the fourth one in my next straight razor shave. I'm going to use the Gold Dollar that I had Ken hone up for me. I would bought it from AliExpress, I think, for super cheap and so when Ken offered to do my Ralph Faust, I sent him the gold dollar as well. So I'll be using that in my next straight razor shave, which I will record and post on the channel. So thanks for watching as always. And until next time, take care, man.